Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Picket Fence Studios and today is a very exciting video because it is release of my new stamp set called Brighter Days Gerber Daisy. So in this image there's a lot of wonderful sentiments but there is this one large floral image. This does have coordinating dyes. I showed you the stencil but I didn't actually end up using it. Um, my game plan changed kind of part way through. So I've really, really wanted, I've been illustrating a couple of sets now, and I really, really wanted to do a large floral because large florals are the easiest to learn coloring. And since I am a colorist, that is something that's super important to me. So I am using uh, the Picket Fence Intense Black uh, ink to ink this up and stamp this down. This is safe for alcohol markers, and I stamped two of the full sizes, and then I'm going to stamp a background. So we're actually going to do three different cards, three different style of cards with just this one image, because you guys know me, I love versatility, I love kind of the most bang for your buck, and I wanted to show you that it's not just one large image that you just have to stamp down and it you know, fills up your whole card, which it does. It's a great focal point, but that you could use it differently as well. So for this one, I'm creating a background. So you can see I'm kind of turning my paper. When I create a background with stamping, I like to stamp off the edge. This gives the uh, illusion that your pattern continues off the page as if it's genuine pattern paper. Um, and so I try to stamp into the middle uh, in the beginning because it's much easier to fill in around the edges than it is to fill in all your edges and then you're left with a blank spot in the middle. So I'm just going to keep turning this and stamping my flower until this entire A2 background is filled up. Now, I colored all of them the same, even though all the layouts are different. I colored all of them the same except for one, and that is the one that I will show you how to color because the base is the same. I just did a little bit of color glazing to um, just kind of make it pop, and the reason that I did that is because of the layout that I chose. So here we have the background on the right and our, um, our full flower just in the center. I'm going to go in with some yellows, some golden yellows into the center. This floral is obviously drawn in more of like a tipped kind of side view. Um, and so the center is almost like domed would be a good way to describe it. So I'm adding shading kind of to the bottom where the petals are curling up and over and then just a little bit around the edges. And I'm just going to keep going until I get to the lightest color at the top. Now I did do one or two little dots of my mid-tone at the top of both mid-tones, um, the YR24 and the Y08, because I didn't want it to have no dimension at the top. Like I didn't want it to be super, super bright, but I definitely wanted it to look as if, you know, that area was sitting higher and it was catching the most light. Then once the center was done, I actually colored another one of these, and I'll probably show that in another video um, where I did it two-tone, but this time around, we're just gonna go with purple. So if you have watched my videos for a long time, you know that way back when I used to color starting with my lightest color and I would use my lightest color to lay in all of my shadows. And we're going to go back to that today because if you are a beginning colorist and I keep seeing more and more comments um, on, you know, the YouTube videos that say, you know, I'm new to card making, I'm new to coloring. And so I thought it would be a good time to kind of go back and revisit this. The first benefit of laying down your shadows with your lightest color is if you make a mistake, it, it's no problem to fix it because it's your lightest color. So you will for sure be able to cover it. Second of all, it gives you more practice because you're essentially coloring each petal twice. So you can see as we're going along here, I am putting down my lightest color, but I'm putting it down where I want my darkest lines to be. There's still tons and tons of white area. I'm following along the lines um, that are drawn in to give the petals shape. 
if you want a little bit of extra dimension, the lines that are at the tips, or if there's any dips in the tips of the petals, you could add a little bit of shading there as well, and that will help give them a little bit more shape. And then we're gonna work from our lightest color to our darkest color, and from our darkest back out to our lightest. When we do that, so now I'm going in with my mid-tone, which is a VO4, it's my lightest mid-tone, and I'm just going right over the uh, lightest color that we've already put down, and just extending it out just a little bit. Not, I'm not filling in the whole flower or the flower petal. I'm not. I'm just going right over what we've already put down with the lightest color because I'm happy with the location of those shadows. And then I am filling it, like just going right over, and then just maybe slightly extending that line out. We're not going to fill it. By the time we get out to our darkest color our floral is still going to have a ton of white space. This is how we make sure that we keep the highlight, but still get those darks in to punch in those shadows to give us really, really great dimension. I, like I said, I have wanted to do a larger floral um, for quite some time, and I'm super grateful for, to Picket Fence for giving me the opportunity to do that. Um, I hope this is something maybe that we can do more of because I really love the way that this one came out. Like I said, this one does have stamp and a coordinating die. I will be using both today, um, but if you are on a budget or you have to make a choice, um, you certainly could just get the uh, the stamp set because this is relatively easy fussy cutting, but even if you didn't want to fussy cut it, um, you know, it's going to fill up your, your whole card. Now, Picket Fence does um, typically, and I will just double check this, um, they usually will do a, like a bundle of them both. I'm just going to double check and see. Um, and there is, there is a bundle of them together um, where you just, you know, you can purchase the bundle and then you'll get, uh, you know, you'll get both the, the stamp and the die set. Um, so I will make sure to link to them individually as well as link to that bundle. Um, and then here, again, we're going in, this is our second mid-tone, this is our dark mid-tone, and we're doing the same thing. We're going over the previous color, and then we're slightly extending it out. You can see this looks crazy. <laughs> it looks a little wild, but that's okay. It's because we still have all of that white space. Um, but by the time that we go back through the second time, we're going to fill in that white space, um, and it's not just going to look as wild. So this is one of those, like, trust the process moments. So while we are doing this, um, I just want to say <laughs> my voiceover might sound a little bit different today um, because I'm doing I'm doing it in a hotel room um, with my very, very kind husband sitting on the couch behind me uh, with his headphones on so he doesn't have to listen <laughs> to my voiceover um, because I am traveling. Um, and so normally I you know, would do all of this stuff before I got home, uh, but, or before I left home, but I just, there was just not enough hours on the day. Y'all know how it is. Like, sometimes it just do be that way, and this time around, it was that way. <laughs> it was that way. So I did check it before I started, and it seemed to sound mostly normal, but if you're just noticing something that's a little bit off, uh, it's because I'm not doing my voiceover at home. So now here we're we're on to the darkest color and we've already done all of this mapping. So the darkest color should not be scary at this point because we have all of this line work to follow. We don't need to add anything extra. We can just go right over the lines. For the edges on the tips, if you don't want to make those the darkest color, like you don't want that much contrast, you can leave them the darkest mid-tone and it will still give you some dimension. But we just really want it, especially where all those petals 
are meeting the center and where they're kind of laying on top of each other, we really want to make sure that we're getting uh, that darker color in there. And this approach typically is much less scary. At least I know it was for me. I colored like this for years. Um, and then eventually I got more comfortable with my coloring and laying down the shadows in the lightest color was not always necessary. I'll be real with you. Sometimes I still do it. If I have a more intricate image or a more complicated image that I've never colored before, sometimes I still do this. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a teaching tool. So now that we're done with our darkest color, we're going to move back to that dark midtone. And again, now we're going to go right over that dark, but this time we are going to extend it out a little bit more. And you'll be able to see as we go that those petals really start filling in. One thing to note is if you have a petal that's on top, you want to make sure you're kind of leaving some lighter areas around the edges because those shadows and those highlights is what helps separate all of the different petals. So as you're adding your color, make sure that you're you're trying to leave a little bit of a white edge where it would be the lightest, which is on the edges of the petals. So now we're going to do the same thing with our second midtone, which is our light midtone. And for this one, we're going to color in the majority of the flower. We're only going to leave little slivers of white where we want the highlight to be. So you can, like I said, you can see as you're, you know, you're doing it once, it looks crazy, twice, okay, now things are starting to come together. The image doesn't really truly come together until we uh, get all the way out to the lightest color. And this was something that when I was first, you know, kind of getting into my Copic markers or any alcohol markers, really, and I was learning from other people, I was like, this looks wild. Like, this, I don't think this is supposed to look like this. And then I would have to get all the way out to the lightest color. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, that tracks. That makes sense. Like, I can see, I can see how this all comes together now. Um, but you just want to make sure that when you're, you know, laying down those shadows to begin with, that you're being really light-handed. The Only the tip of your marker should be touching the paper. Um, you know, you don't want to be applying a ton of pressure so that your ink is bleeding out. You want to use very light pressure so that you maintain a, a good amount of control over where your color is going. So now you can see we're almost done adding this entire um, mid-tone. There are still some white areas. And if you're a person who wants a really strong highlight, you can leave them white. You, you don't have to color them in with the lightest color. Because obviously we have really good dimension. We have really good separation of our petals. You could leave it white if you want that really strong, bold highlight. Adding in your lightest color, which in our case here is a VO1, is going to soften it back a little bit. Now, if you have a color, like in this case, a VO1 does tend to what I call bleach out its previous color. So I like to come in from the tips instead of going over all of that dark shadow. I don't want to remove that. I don't want to lighten that up. So I do tend to bring in my marker from the outside edge and then just kind of flick it in to the petals. Um, but you can do whatever works for you. If you feel like your maybe your darks are too dark, then absolutely go over the whole thing with your lightest color and it will lighten all of it up. Um, but I do like to keep my darks pretty true to their natural color. Um, and then that's for all of the other flowers, for the ones that you will see in the next two cards as well as the background, they will be colored exactly like this with the purple. And purple and yellow are complementary colors on the color wheel, so they work really nicely together. Um, so I, all of them will be what you just saw. For the greenery, I opted to do more of like a yellow green for my florals, or for my florals, for my leaves, um, and then just kind of follow along with the lines that are drawn. You know, there's two leaves here. If you wanted to, um, you know, 
I guess if you wanted to kind of rearrange them, you absolutely could cut the leaves off of the stem, you know, and, you know, maybe just cut the stem off altogether and kind of, you know, tuck them behind to change up the look of the flower. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. I think bigger images can sometimes feel like you're getting less, um, because there's only that one image, but just because there's one image doesn't mean that you have to do less with it. It just kind of means that we do different things with it. So I started with my darkest color. Same thing, uh, like this one. <laughs> this one I did revert back to the way I've been coloring because I started with my darkest color. But if you're uncomfortable, you absolutely could do the same thing that we did with the floral where we go in with the lightest, map out our shadows. Um, and honestly, I don't 100% love these leaves. I'm just being honest with you. Like, I don't 100% love the way I colored them because I wanted to get the movement. You know, they're very kind of wavy. Um, and I wanted to get the, the movement, but I struggled with adding the shading for the movement with the lines that were already there. So I did end up messing around with them kind of a little bit to, um, until I was happier with them. Uh, and so it would have behooved me to start with my lightest color because then I would have seen right away the things that I didn't like about the shading that I had added. Um, so like I said, it's not it's not a bad practice to be in. I think a lot of people don't like to do it because it does take a little bit more time since you are essentially coloring it twice. But if you're learning and you have, like, let's just say, like, you stamp out some images and you're sitting down and watching TV, like, and you're just playing, just practice your leaves or just practice your, um, you know, your florals. So here, this is the one that I'm doing just a little bit differently, and I'll explain why when we get to the actual card design. But for this one, I'm going in, in with an RV04, and I'm just coming in from the tips of the petals and just doing a couple of little flicks of color. This is going to brighten it up quite a bit. It's going to give it more of a like purpley magenta feel versus a true kind of violet feel. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I need it to stand out from the rest of my card. And this is a really great way to do that. So love the way that these came out. I colored all of the rest of them um, the same. For here, if you feel like the pink is too much, or you could do this with blue as well. Anything that's next to purple on the color wheel, you can glaze with and have a great result. Um, if you feel like the pink is a little bit too much, kind of too in your face, you can go back over it with your lightest purple color and it will kind of knock it back. The V01 is less saturated than the RV04, so it does knock it back a considerable amount. So now that we have that done, here's where I'm going to go back in and mess around with my leaves. Um, I told you I just wasn't happy with them. And I'm not a perfect colorist. I'm still learning things. You know, I'm still um, perfecting my craft, if you will. And so going back in and kind of trying to figure out what is going to make me happier with them, as long as you aren't oversaturating your paper, like to the point where your ink is bleeding out of your lines, you can do multiple layers and kind of play around with it until you get something that you're happy with. So here is the background and the single. Um, so you can see the difference how the one on the left is a, a bit more pink. And then we're going to do the background. So for the background of this, unfortunately, I seem to have lost a little bit of footage. Um, in my defense, I was editing this on a plane. <laughs> so I outlined the whole thing in black. And then I'm going in with a C9. And I'm outlining like right up next to the black with the C9. I'm not going to make this background gray, but what this does is it's like a little bit of a trick. If you don't have a multitude of darker colors, and sometimes you just, either you don't own them or the marker uh, company doesn't make them. So once I have the C9 down, so it went black, outlined, C9 outlined, now we just did the C7. 
Now I'm going to go in with this G29, which is the darkest green that I own. And I'm going to color over everything. And so the areas that are white are going to be the true color of a G29. But the areas that we've used the darker gray, it's going to create a darker green because we have those grays as a base. So it's going to look like there are darker and lighter areas of green. Nobody is even going to see that black or that gray because we're going to go over the whole thing. And then giving it that darker background gives us a ton of contrast, which you know we love. We love the drama in card making. Um, and then it will... Um, I'll, you know, really make those flowers kind of pop forward. So you could use this piece as is, but that piece is a lot of work. So I'm going to use it twice. <laughs> I'm going to use it twice. So the one on the left has the pink added to it. The one in the middle is the purple. And obviously the one on the far right hand side is the, um, Outline. I'm, I'm going to use the uh, Basics die. This comes with several sized arches. It also comes with this arched window. And then I'm going to use the uh, coordinating die for our Gerber Daisy here. And then I'm going to cut all of these out. The arch that we're cutting out of the background, don't be scared. We're going to use both pieces. None of it's going to go to waste. Um, but that way we can cut them into two separate pieces and we can get three cards out of the, just this, you know, one stamp set that look completely different. So I chose some sentiments. There are, um, you know, like there's a, a mom, a sister, um, a friend, like there's a, a couple, but then there's also just really good encouraging ones like brighter days ahead or you make my day brighter. Uh, you're an amazing friend, mom, sister, fill in the blank. Um, I love seeing you bloom. Um, so there's just some really good encouraging ones because again, the more versatile, the better as far as I am concerned. And all of the sentiments have uh, die cuts as well. So the first one, I've used a piece of dark green cardstock. I've trimmed that down just a little bit so that it has a white mat. I am going to use my window uh, die cut, and I'm going to um, stack these up a little bit. So I'm just getting my flower into place. The part of the stem that's sticking out, I am just going to trim off so it looks like it's kind of popping up out of the window. And then behind this, I am going to stack two more window frames so that it will be lifted and the flower then will rest on top of these um, windows so they'll also be lifted up off the ground. So I just stacked those two and then I glued those two um, to the background with the flower. In order to even everything out, I am using some lower profile foam adhesive on the portions of the flowers that stick through. Obviously, we don't want our card to fall apart. We want really good um, adhesion with that. So I'm going to just put down my mat flat. This is, you know, just the white card base. This is trimmed just an eighth of an inch smaller. So just so there's like a little peak of white, which is going to be complementary to not only our white frame, but also our white sentiment. I went back and forth about whether or not to do the sentiments like white heat embossed on green. Um, but ultimately the way that they were kind of landing in the design, I thought the white looked nicer, but you could always you know, stamp both of them and test them out to see which one you like. And then you'll just have like extras for another time. So here, this is now popped up off of our background. This is a nice kind of sweet, simple one with a little frame. And it's going to say, you're an amazing friend. I chose to adhere the you're an amazing along the same crossbar that the window would have. And then the friend will just go kind of like down into the bottom right. Um, I did um, end up adding some rhinestones to these and you'll see them at the end. You won't see me adhere them, but you'll see them at the end. And those came from, which is quickly becoming one of my favorites, um, the, the, the purple, purple side of the rainbow. So for this one, I switched it up and I did a white <laughs> layer on green cardstock. And then I am going to use the, um, 
picket fence foam tape. This is a higher profile foam tape, so it's going to give us a good amount of height, and this will help it, um, like, help it be to carry the whole card, you know, because this is just our focal point. This is the part that we cut out of the middle of our background. This one might be my favorite. I think it's the most clean and simple, so that's why it might be my favorite, but you just have, like, this beautiful floral, um, nice clean background, lots of contrast, uh, which is, you know, totally my jam. I figure I will probably use one of these. <laughs> my, uh, my middle sister, purple, is her favorite color, so I figure I'll probably use one of these maybe for her birthday card or for her Mother's Day card or, you know, something like that. So I did, the U hangs off just slightly, so I had to use a little bit of foam tape there, and then I used liquid adhesive for the rest of the sentiment, and I used liquid adhesive for the word brighter because it is going to sit right on top. Um, so there was a need to add any more, uh, dimension. So, yeah, um, I have been thinking about story time and I'm thinking, and you guys let me know what you think. I, I think I'm going to start a series that's just called, I made something pretty. And that those videos will have story time in them because I think as this has become my full-time job, I have concentrated so much on teaching because I do want you to learn something and you, but you still can learn something from if I just make a pretty card, you know, where we have kind of that back and forth. Uh, it doesn't have to be a whole lesson. And so there's um, some couple of other things going on in my life that have given me kind of more perspective, and I'll be happy to share those in a story time. <laughs> um, but you let me know what you think. If Is it okay with you if we just do one card where we make a pretty card and we have some story time? So for this one, this is why I need that flower to stand out because it is kind of tucked into the background. So I didn't, I wanted them to be complimentary, but I didn't want that bloom to be competing with the, the background. I wanted to give it something special. So I did pop it up slightly, not the whole thing, but just the center flower. And that's also the one that has the pink on it. I added the sentiment and then of course, you know, I added the glimmer and the shimmer to all of the flowers because that is how I roll. Um, and then some white gel pen I just used to highlight the semen on the um, insides of the flowers. And then that's it. That's all three cards. So I hope that you will... Um, you know, be inspired to maybe try maybe a bigger image, even if this one's not for you. They really, if you want to practice your coloring, these really are, um, you know, great ways to do that. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video.